This is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today on Museum at Home, we're looking at Klitsa Lodge. Klitsa Lodge was a rustic summer vacation spot on the shores of Sprout Lake. In its heyday, it had attracted an elite crowd from many places, including California and Hollywood. Its guests included Mae West and Charlie Chaplin, as well as Gone with the Wind actress Olivia de Havilland and the eccentric millionaire Cornelius Vanderbilt. And it all began with Mrs. Wark. Josephine Wark was born Josephine Harris in Oregon in 1865. She moved to Victoria in 1893, and in 1898 she was married to John Wark, a man from an established Victoria family who worked as a clerk. When they were married in Seattle, Josephine's occupation was listed as dressmaker. For the first few years of their marriage, John and Josephine lived together in Victoria at the Burdett Hotel, which Josephine managed. Josephine had many talents, from painting and needlework to hunting and fishing. In the early years of her marriage, when she and her husband lived together in Victoria, Josephine painted these china pieces that are now at the Alberni Valley Museum. China painting was a fashionable hobby at the time. The paints and gold luster used didn't wear well, so the pieces weren't functional, they were just for show. When Josephine painted these around 1902, she sent them out to a shop to be fired in a kiln, and was very pleased when out for a walk with her husband, she found her pieces displayed in the proprietor's window. In 1903, Josephine bought the Strathcona Hotel on Shawnigan Lake, and from this point on there is no mention of her husband. Josephine operated the Strathcona Hotel until around 1912, when she sold it for $25,000. In February of 1912, Josephine Wart came to Sprout Lake. She bought three lots on the south side of the lake and, according to the Alberni Pioneer News, was intending to have a summer hotel built. By 1914, she had a houseboat on the lake, and here teas and lunches were served. She may have run her resort from the houseboat, but around 1919 she purchased the summer house of Vancouver lawyer E.P. Davis, which became Klitsa Lodge. By 1920, her resort was in full operation. Her two lovely places, Klitsa Lodge and Kahalaka Camp, hosted a number of visitors from around the world that summer, including pineapple growers from Hawaii and ranchers from California. It was also in 1920 that the American Cornelius Vanderbilt, on honeymoon with his wife Rachel, visited the lodge. In an article for Motor Life magazine, he wrote that we were quickly installed in a tent owned by that well-known character, Mrs. Wark. The chalet is a most unique boarding house, if such a commonplace name may be adopted. Mrs. Wark lives in a houseboat on the shores of Sprout Lake. She owns a few acres of property behind this, which she had the far-sightedness to turn into a kitchen garden. Two miles across the lake, on a protruding point of land, she has a little house which consists of dining rooms, kitchen, and a few bedrooms for those guests who prefer to be indoors. This was enlarged in 1924, adding four bedrooms and two bathrooms. Over the years, a number of cottages were built around the property. Some were numbered, others had names. Rose, Aloha, Shore. As Vanderbilt mentioned, along the shore of the lake there were tents ranging in size where guests stayed. In 1921, a dining lodge was built behind the original cottage. Getting to the lodge was also an adventure, as it wasn't accessible by road. Guests would go to Bishop's Landing and ring a bell to summon a boat to come over and fetch them. Reading the guest books from Klitsa Lodge gives us a glimpse of the guests and of Mrs. Wark. Guests remark on the beauty of the place and also on the fishing. One guest in 1922 wrote, A little bit of heaven, a lovely summer home, mountains, trees, and rivers, a badly sunburned dome. Bathing is as perfect as any one could wish, but most wonderful of all things, by heck, I caught a fish. Guests also mention their host, the adorable Mrs. Wark, or hostess makes it all one could wish. Until World War II, Josephine Wark operated her resort from April to October, and headed south to the United States for the winters. She seems to have joined the social circles of her patrons, often wealthy and prominent Californians. As a guest in their homes, she could promote Alberni Valley tourism to a cohort of wealthy Americans who were seeking a rustic getaway. Josephine Wark was in her late 70s when she died in 1942. 
A week after her passing, Arnold and May Cole came to Klitza Lodge on their honeymoon. Cole owned three restaurants in Vancouver, where he had met his wife, a cook. The Coles purchased Klitza Lodge soon after, with May staying at the lodge while Arnold commuted to Vancouver. By the time their son Bobby was born in 1946, they had sold the Vancouver restaurants and were living full-time at the lodge. The Coles made improvements to the lodge, adding a bar and improving the road to the lodge, although one of their first endeavours was to add windows to the buildings. Mrs. Wark had provided window coverings, but not glass in the windows. The lodge was also completely off-grid, so the Coles installed a diesel generator to provide electricity. Mrs. Wark had established a certain American clientele that continued to grow with the Coles' operation of the lodge, attracting some of Hollywood's elite. The Coles' son, Bob Cole, recalled playing with the son of George Seaton. George had won an Oscar for his direction of the film Miracle on 34th Street. The Seaton's visit was the first time Bob had ever seen a full-size movie camera, or a BB gun. Bob also related a story about Olivia de Havilland. Uh, there's a picture in the local paper of Olivia de Havilland on her, her honeymoon, and I was a baby at the time, and she was holding me in her arms. The local paper reported Olivia de Havilland with her baby on her honeymoon. In those days, having a baby on your honeymoon was completely a no-no, okay? Uh, the big retraction, apparently. In the 1950s, there was a flying crowd that came to the lodge. The float planes could tie up at the dock, but the Seabees, the amphibious planes, would pull up on the sand at the point. Fishing was popular. They would fly into the various local lakes. The Mint Lake was quite popular, and then go fishing. The Coles sold the lodge around 1961, while it was still flourishing. The new owners, however, were foreclosed on, and the lodge closed a few years later. And so the legacy of Josephine Wark came to an end. Over the years, Mrs. Wark became a mythic figure in the Alberni Valley because of her many accomplishments and successes, and possibly because of the air of mystery that surrounded her. Probably her lifestyle contributed also, as she acted as a connection between the local population and wealthy tourists, including business magnates and Hollywood celebrities. Through her effort, she repositioned Sprout Lake from cottage country for BC residents to a playground for the elite of North America.